Well, now about a month into Flight Sim 2020, we've had a chance to take a look at it, and I think we've all realized there are some things missing that we were used to. Well, I'm happy to tell you that one of the things that I really liked about flight simming on uh, X-Plane and also uh, FSX was Air Manager, and I'm happy to tell you that I've got it working with FS 2020 thanks to the work of the people at Sim Innovations. Despite the fact that the software development kit for uh, for FS 2020 is not yet allowing uh, the making of plugins, uh, Corian, the uh, programmer at S Sim Innovations, has developed a bridge application that works beautifully. So in this video, I'm going to give a short demo of Air Manager working with Flight Sim 2020. Also uh, demo that on the 15.6 inch touch monitor that I featured in previous videos along with X-Plane uh, using the Knobster. And also I'm going to show you how to pop windows out from the displays in FS2020 and how they can be incorporated along with Air Manager to create some pretty cool panels. I know we have some new users in our community so let me briefly explain what Air Manager does. Air Manager is software that allows you to interface uh, 2D panels on LCD monitors and also hardware, Arduino and Raspberry Pi, with the simulator. It allows the simulator data to be displayed on instruments that you can either design yourself or uh, use those that are in the over 600 in the uh, library that are available free to Air Manager users. Now pilot inputs made on the LCD panel, if it's touch or using the mouse, or hardware that you've built hardware using Air Manager, uh, those inputs are sent to the simulator just as though you had made them on the simulator. So it's a two-way communication that allows you to control the simulator and monitor it using 2D panels, which is great for home-built cockpits and also uh, just to allow a more realistic experience without using a mouse or keyboard to operate the sim. Now there were initially some uh, frame issues with uh, the initial release uh, with SimConnect and it was uh, very jerky and not usable but as you can see now it's quite uh, smooth and easy to use and uh, uh, I think it has great promise. This is uh, the beta version that is available as a public beta at the uh, Sim Innovations Wiki uh, and until the release version of 4.0 is released this should be available if you wanted to try it out. Now here I'm just showing one of the uh, stock panels, free panels, and I'm making some inputs using the Knobster. Uh, it's a dual knob with a push button and I can just touch a knob, any knob in the, in the touch screen and uh, simulate that knob with the Knobster uh, and it's quite useful. Now this free panel has been mostly modified for FS2020 but I notice fuel selector is not working exactly right but uh, we'll get that modified now that we have uh, a good uh, plug-in or I should say bridge application to uh, get the data out of uh, FS2020 and uh, we should see these panels evolve quickly I want, certainly want to convert the G1000 bezel and hopefully as the, the G1000 and the 530 uh, Garmin 530 improve on FS2020 will be ready for that so that those can be incorporated into panels just like we've done with uh, with X-Plane in the past. The real advantage of having another instrument panel as opposed to uh, having to change views or move your head with uh, with Track IR is that all you have to do is just glance your eyes down and you can see the instrument panel uh, very realistically. Just adds so much more realism to the uh, to the sim. No matter where you're looking, uh, you can keep the aircraft uh, under control using the instruments. Now the cockpit I'm using was originally designed for VR flying uh, and uh, I've kind of modified it. I had a 43 inch monitor so I mounted that on the wall in front and I've uh, attached this small 15.6 inch monitor that I used previously with X-Plane. It has a Knobster mounted on the side and I use it uh, just uh, attached to the top of the the uh, holes that are originally made in the uh, honeycomb and it sits quite nicely. It's just a piece of aluminum that's bent. And at the end of the video I'll incl include uh, details about the monitor and, uh, and the aluminum that I used but uh, in how to acquire the Knobster but that can all be put together and uh, it's, they're really nice touch monitors and they're under $200. They're full HD monitors. 
Anyway, mounting that on there gives me the benefit of being able to change the view to get a little more view out the front and less instrument panel and also not having to keep changing views to read the instruments. Uh, I like having those instruments that I can glance down at. It's very realistic and as you can see I can lower that the uh, raise the head position a little and get a better view out the front which is uh, for me a lot nicer. So Microsoft has made it quite easy to pop windows, the glass displays out in the cockpits into separate windows for use on other panels and that works great with this setup. So let me show you how you can pop the windows out and how I like to incorporate them into uh, uh, with other air manager instruments into a panel. The first step is to hold down the Alt key to the right of the spacebar and click on the display. This will open the window containing that display. Do the same thing with the second display and it now adds that to that window that pops out and then the third window and now we have all three windows. Now just click the little, little magnifying glass and that'll pop out that one window and now you just have the two windows remaining. Do the same thing. Click the the little uh, looking glass symbol and then that will pop out the second one. You can resize those windows on your monitor. Let's resize the other one and uh, and then we can do the same thing. Click the little magnifying glass and pop the uh, standby attitude indicator out there, standby instrument out. And then it's just a matter of arranging them. Now um, once you get them sized up um, what I'm going to do is produce, I'm going to I've created a little panel an air manager that can can uh, subsidize this. We need to probably move that uh, standby instrument uh, we'll move that down to the bottom there. Uh, now I've created a simple panel, um, a custom sized panel in Air Manager to fit that opening and put the gear, just a, a standard gear flap and parking brake, flap indicator and parking brake into that window. And I'll open the window here and you can see it. And uh, we'll minimize that window and you can see how it kind of fits in into the uh, other displays and kind of augments that. So now we're ready to go fly and see how it works. So we release the parking brake with our finger and and we're off. So the real advantages of Air Manager are that uh, it does give you that dedicated cockpit reach out, touch things, no need for the um, for any use of uh, mouse or keyboard uh, once you get the airplane flying gear up there with a the finger and uh, we can monitor the flaps with the uh, flap indicator on the uh, screen there when we get the cleanup you can see right there and uh, it just uh, you can look down and see the instruments you could put a, an MCP above the top of those and I'm going to be developing some more panels to, to interface with this, uh, but I'm just happy that it works so well and it gives us uh, something to look forward to as far as developing uh, home cockpits with FS2020. Still a long way to go, but they seem to be committed to uh, improving the product. Now before we go, I wanted to show you uh, what the panel looks like in a screen capture because it's, the image is much better than what I can capture with my iPhone taking pictures of LCD screens. Uh, so here, here's a look at the panel uh, as a screen capture and you can see it's quite sharp and detailed um, once we get it powered up here, the sim powered up, uh, everything is synced and it's very uh, very clear. Now this is a pay panel, a free pay panel and there's like I said 600 instruments to pick from right now in the store. We have a strong community of, of users that we all submit our instruments to, Sim Innovations and, and they uh, share, we share them and uh, there's also some pay panels usually run about 10 euros they're not too expensive uh, but this is one of the free panels and you can rearrange the instruments any way you want uh, just simply just drag them around resize them when you get them ready then you can uh, save the panel and it can open it you can even have it open automatically when a certain airplane opens just wanted to show you that before we move on all the experienced guys keep telling me the, that uh, even though I'm approaching 10,000 uh, subscribers that uh, I should ask early in the video that you like, subscribe, comment, share, and so on. 
Um, I'm going to ask you that now, if you would. It's it's kind of a I'm doing this for free, and I'm not monetizing it. It's just a hobby, but it does keep me going to know people are interested in what I'm doing. So if you like my videos, I'd appreciate it if you would do one of those things uh, or all of those things. Um, real excited about Flight Sim 2020. I think it offers uh, a great potential. I think it's got a ways to go, but I, I am excited now that we can use Air Manager with it in the Knobster, which I have a special interest in because it was my idea to develop the Knobster. Um, I would ask that you, uh, if you're interested in trying to build something like this yourself, at the very end of the video here, I'm going to uh, list uh, the sources uh, for the monitor. It's an Amazon product, but I'll put the information about that. And also the sheet of aluminum that I bought from Amazon that I've been using a, a break from, um, from uh, Harbor Freight. I have a video about that, which I'm going to also link here above um, that you might want to look at because I show how I actually built the first one. You notice it was slightly different though. I used corner brackets and then this time I the uh, threaded holes on the back of the monitor and I think it's called VESA uh, pattern that I was able to just put the screws through and screw the monitor to the sheet. I did leave the bottom brackets on there just to give it something to uh, sit on but that wouldn't be necessary. Anyway, I appreciate your, uh, your time. Thanks for watching my video, and I hope you'll be seeing my next video when it comes out. If you'd like to uh, click that notification bell, you'll even get a note when I'm ready to release it. Thanks very much. Have a great day. So if you're still here, this is the monitor that I was referring to. It's a 15.6-inch diagonal uh, color monitor. And it has uh, the VESA, V-E-S-A, uh, 75 by 75 millimeter uh, mounting holes with screws. Uh, they're threaded in the back, so you can just dil drill a hole in the aluminum and mount that. Uh, there's four holes, so if you put all four in there, you would. that's all you need. And here's the aluminum sheet. This aluminum sheet could be mounted, uh, uh, f just bent and uh, drilled to match the holes on the top of the uh, of the honeycomb yoke. The screws just uh, come out with a hex wrench and then you can screw those back in and it's quite sturdy and if you wanted to mount the lot knobster you need to cut a little slot or notch to get the uh, cord through and then just drill four holes. And the knobster is available from Sim Innovations also Air Manager available from, from Sim Innovation at uh, this website. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.